it's closer to the community area, stuff like that. Yeah, a typical day in the life. It's gone on a lot longer than I thought it was going to. <laughs> so, but yeah, at least I'm not like insecure. Like. Are we insecure? Sure of. You talk your passion. That always yeah. works. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, a, a typical day in our life is like working. I mean, you know, it sounds like work, but when you like love what you do, it's not work. <laughs> um, like that usually entails like weed whacking, macheting. Like, you know, for example, we have like rows of fruit trees. Like I didn't go through all of them. I'd love to do that. You know, like meringues, canastelles, rasapote, black sapote, uh, sapodilla. Oh, yeah. A lot of them are just starting to fruit, flowering. You know, so we're just like, no. <laughs> it's about to get crazy. <laughs> but, um, you know, and since the jackfruit, like this last year, so we're like getting this really kind of idea of like how the future is going to be, and it's nice. But so, example, for example, we have like a, a row on contour as we like the plant in the beginning. Now we're kind of whatever. We're trying fridge, we're trying almost everything by this time. But a lot of ours are on contour, which means like you know you have a hill, and we're just like. like that. And then, like, if you like, it gets complicated. But anyways, so like a driveway goes up the hill, you know, like this to our community center, and then off the side of it, trying to stay level, because that's the easiest way to kind of like, for the rain as it brings soil down, it'll catch the nutrients as well as like, um, if you're gonna walk along those rinds all day, it's a lot easier to go like on the same level than to like be going down and then up and down and then up. We use a lot more, a lot less energy this way. Um, so, for example, on a contour line, we have like 10 or 20 fruit trees, and they're spaced at like 30 feet or 10 meters on average. And then we usually have like a banana or two bananas or a millennia, some smaller tree in the middle of those bigger trees, what will be bigger, you know, or they some of them are. But uh, so then we like we we whack that, and then we like machete the weed trees that are growing, and we put that on the mulch pile around the fruit tree. That's a lot of our work. Um, harvesting is a lot of our work. Um, construction or maintenance of buildings more so goes on the Ecuadorian workers that we hire, but sometimes you know, it's something little. Sometimes it's just best on us. There's a <laughs> technical work, um, you know, like computer work, <coughs> organization. There's a lot of what's become kind of my like realization that like society and stuff misses out on and like maybe in some like offices and like corporations that happens that I don't ever experience but like brainstorming and like project direction like thinking up a project thinking how it's going to happen thinking of what's going to go wrong computer right you know this one theorizing what goes wrong and things anyways <laughs> as an engineer so. um, uh you know, th that stuff's become a lot of fun, like, I found out and that, like, people don't do it, like, you know, typically, like, a, a group here, we talk about some sharing information, but it gets a lot more fun when it's, like, a group brainstorming of, like, you know, you know he's, like, an engineer, you're more experienced in community living, you know, you know, so you're, like, in a hospital, like, you know, all these little things, all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, I, I, I know something that will happen here, what would work better, and then it's just a lot of fun. How many years right now? Uh, at there? Uh, seven with Herobrutus and 15 at Fruit Haven. So, but yeah, it's like 5 to 10, 10 to 20. But still, even if it's just five people, it's like a, it's like a exercise, muscle, and art that we kind of don't do so much in my experience. I think it becomes more, you know, like, it'll, it'll become more common when people do things like this and that they're like living outside of a system where like they expect government to look after them with the money income once they get older they you know once they're like oh wait i want like you know things to work well because i'm relying on it to work well they'll have more like creative and like thorough input and then just meetings that's another kind of thing we have like once a week community meetings uh we s socialize you know talk to each other have community meals uh occasionally there's bonfires but a lot of people don't really like them so much so we'd rather throw that wood on our fruit tree as fertilizer because we don't bring in fertilizer <laughs> <laughs> Um, MVC workshops, other type of workshops when people come through and they're just interested in sharing stuff. But kind of
kind of stuff happens. There's movie nights, uh, dances, stuff like that. Kind of went from like the most common to the least common as I, as I went through that list. <laughs> um, then of course, yeah, uh, there's also a lot of, this is like what people do in their daily life. Um, there's a bit of just spending time alone on the internet, um, people working on their online businesses. Um, and yeah, there's a bit of like, you know, spiritual growth, which I, I wasn't into at all until living in a community. Okay. Um, but yeah. Feeling, feeling, st weird stuff like that, you know, at first I was just like, what are these people doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta grow food and eat, you know? <laughs> it's like, we gotta get back to work, you guys. Stop <coughs> talking about weird shit. <laughs> but now, now, I'm, <laughs> but now, now I'm into that stuff too, you know? <laughs> now I've realized, it, for a long time it confused me, like, what is the meaning of enlightenment, you know? Like, enlightenment or enlightening is like a thing people refer to a lot, and I realize it's like carrying a backpack, you know? It's like if you take off the backpack, you were just enlightened. That's that's the best definition. So it's like you know you take off some bad ideas, you become enlightened. You're just like you're tired of having your shoes on. You take them off, you get enlightened. You know. <laughs> I don't know. That's how I define it. <laughs> um, so yeah, some of our foods and guidelines. It's whole foods. I've kind of already talked about this. Vegan or Occasionally, endo vegan. You guys know what that is? It's where, where people include insects in a vegan diet. It's something I've kind of I've kind of investigated a bit because like a lot of times, you know, I, I get into arguments with people online or in person or whatever. It's like you know, you know. You know, going into kind of logical process of like, you know, bonobos, apes, they do eat some animal products, small amount of insects is usually the first choice, so usually it's termites, you tried eating termites a bit, anyways, you guys don't seem interested in eating insects. <laughs> <laughs> insects, they don't, I don't, I mean, termites, I don't, I, I can't eat a, like a grub or anything like that, I've tried to think about it, and I'm like, no, but I've, I've been able to eat termites. <coughs> And yeah, they just like crunchy, taste kind of like lettuce with pine flavor. <laughs> so, so endo vegan is basically when you include these insects yeah. in your diet. Yeah. Okay. Because like a lot of people would argue, you know, like, like what about zinc to copper ratios in a vegan diet? Like maybe you're gonna get brain problems when you're 80 years old. I'm like okay, so like what, what's high in zinc? Like pumpkin seeds. Uh, you know, and kala, this weird fruit from Borneo, uh, insects, you know, and yeah, if you argue with someone about, like, our biological species-specific diet, then it's like, well, you should be eating some insects, or, like, 1% of your calories from fish, or, and occasionally, you, you're cannibalistic. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh. Yeah. So, so, you know, obviously, we're not going to eat each other and stuff like that, but just to, like, you know. Now it just got weird. <laughs> 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 I think I'm the community life. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no. You just got voted off. The there's community. no. <laughs> 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 you, you did say your right arm tasted nice, didn't you? Apparently, to the bugs. That's where all my blood goes. It's like the best. I've thought sometimes, like when I broke my ankle in the yeah. early days of like mm. when I was looking for property, I broke my ankle and I like, couldn't walk for three months and it took like a year and a half before I could run without pain. And uh, I was thinking, like, if I just have my right arm, if I'm like a quadriplegic or like a triplegic, lose my legs and one arm, at least I have my right arm. If I lose my right arm, I don't know. <laughs> I'd rather lose my three other legs than my right arm. <laughs> anyway, I could imagine myself crawling around with my right arm. Like, <laughs> 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 like, I'll still get the machete. Yeah. Like, I, I can do stuff. I like, Because some people are like, why don't you machete with your left arm? You know, and I'm like, just, just. And I, I know I should. You know, I hold sticks with my left arm. I move stuff with my left arm. But, you know, some of my friends are like, you should machete with your, and then machete with your left arm, and like, you know, get like symmetrical. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
we um gen like uh, one of the other terms we use is like following like Arnold Arid ideas of mucusless diet. So like you know there's like some people are like strictly raw. Most people are like eating cooked food sometimes. Um, just to be realistic, you know, some people, a lot of people come and they're like, you're not raw. I'm like, yeah, I'm eating potatoes, boiled potatoes. It's not that bad. But I mean, yeah, obviously, like yeah, maybe I'll die soon. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, some of those things you just gotta lay out what you want in life, you know. Yeah. I totally support people to be fully raw, and I want to see people reproduce like fully raw. If my girlfriend's fully raw, I'm gonna try to reproduce with her. <laughs> Seven years, she's doing good, you know. I fully support that. <laughs> Because yeah, you know, like I was talking about the Pottinger study with the cats, you know, we we gotta work our way back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, uh, locally, like we order food. I mean, some people come and they want to do like veggie gardening, gardening, and like the tropics is just not the place to do veggies, especially like most of the veggies you know and love, like tomatoes, and, like broccoli and, you know especially the human tropics like I've, I've grown marijuana before like and it just rotted before it even became like a ripe marijuana plant it was, it was pretty like i don't know made me feel good like oh another reason not to smoke weed you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah also herbs right herbs don't grow there yeah some things oregano is actually originally a tropical okay. plant um, yeah. <laughs> it's like my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, cilantro grows there. Um, yeah, we have a well, right? Celery, I don't know. Like, I have I grown think. it before, but it doesn't, you know, like these fat chunks of celery that we eat, those are mostly like temperature controlled greenhouses. Mm -hmm. um, they need yeah, like a cool temperature and like and all they this. play with the light so that they grow so so tall. So it's yeah, it's like the more you go into specific agriculture, you realize like, wait, like some people come and they're like, you guys don't do like hybrid fruits, right? And we're like, oh god. It's like sit down, have a talk, you know. Like, <laughs> so, you know, what is a hybrid fruit? Like basically all fruit that you know has been hybridized, grown, bred within the last ten thousand years. Like like you go down the line, some of the oldest things like dates, figs, durian, they're like you can't find record of them. People can't find record of them past thirteen thousand years or so. So you know, basically everything you're eating is like recently been created. And that's gets into like some more like, you know, what's a good thing to do? What's a purpose in your life? It's probably a good thing to do is to invest like some energy or at least like emotional support to people that like breed things, fruit, fruit plants and especially fruit trees. They're like something that most um, businesses don't even go into unless it's like a banana, something that has a short life cycle that they can breed it in a quick time to get their money return. But like a lot of these long term things like durian, that's only, we only have good durian because like the awesome people in Southeast um, Asia have been like going for generations and generations some of the outside all berries we have like because it's like pakistani people have been going for generations to make these like nice long white mulberries that we have in our farm like you know some of these things you just got to give like like forget about the gods give praise to some of these humans that have gone for like thousands of you know years like breeding a specific couple fruits to make them really awesome because <laughs> obviously god you know maybe god did all this but he didn't do these fruits that we love you know <laughs> People did that. <laughs> well, unless, unless everything is not here. So, yeah, we get most of our veggies and stuff. We don't grow them. We get them from, <laughs> from the mountains where they have a colder climate. And, uh, so, we get those on the weekly food, food orders. Um, we do grow most of our own greens. It's called Indian lettuce. It's like a big lettuce plant that likes the, the hot tropical stuff. We also use a lot of sweet leaf or katuk. Um, just to give you kind of an idea of our foods. Um, okay, I'm not going to go into organic stuff. Okay, I'll go into it. <laughs> 
like some people comment and ask like, what is the food in the market organic? A lot of it's what they call like conglomerate. They just kind of like, they buy it from three or four farms up the mountain, bring it in to a truck that goes to like two or three towns where they don't have that food and they sell it. You don't really know if it's organic or not. And what they call organic in Latin America, South America is just that it composts. So if you go around the market, or if you go around a market asking like, is organic or they'll be like, uh, yeah, rots. It's, 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 it's an organic, it's like organic produce, you know, the, the terminology of things. So then you gotta ask, like, do you fumigate? Do you, do you like, spray? Stuff like that. Anyways, but yeah. Maybe, maybe a little comment there. Um, I was in Myanmar at the beginning of this year, and there they say, yeah, pretty much most of the time the farmers have maybe enough money to buy it. Um, like pesticides once in, in the cycle of the plant's life and show that one time will be more harder type of pesticides that they have but they can't afford anymore so they just use it because they're rich enough to do so and then maybe the and maybe the plants are maybe a little bit better for him to sell later on or look more look better or whatever but generally, most of the farmers simply don't have the money to buy all this chemical stuff doing the yeah. agriculture. And so, by default, even though it might not fulfill the criteria of organic, they're much closer than, than we would be here. Yeah. And then you look at organic in the United States, at least. I'm not sure about Europe, but there's different standards of organic, I think, in Europe. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but in the States, yeah. there's like 46 organic chemicals that can be applied to the crop and still be under the guise of organic, mm. I think. I mean, even some the of the things in Europe are more strict. I like that they, they test the soil. Like if, even the word wow. chemical is misleading, right? Because everything's chemical, like everything's physical, like everything's mathematical. But somehow it's negative for us, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes. There's a lot about terminology and how ignorant we are. <laughs> some of the stuff, you know, I'm like. <laughs> But yeah, oftentimes we get like, is there, you know, can you get organic food? There is like an organic shop in town, but there's almost nothing there when it's open on the weekends. It's like, um, yeah, so I also got, got the question recently, uh, what do you guys do for exercise? Work? First <laughs> first <laughs> but also, yeah, like just jogging up and down the driveway or on that recently built gravel road. Um, yoga, some bicycling, and carrying fruit. <laughs> Going up a slight incline onto a random banana is <laughs> yeah. a good exercise. Um, so then, yeah, more information on like how we actually do the group buys. There's a seed investors, which I explained. Somebody initially kind of puts down a lump sum for the property if it's a new property, but there's plenty of small lots for sale. Those are typically priced between five to fifteen thousand U.S. dollars. Um, uh, you can buy it remotely, as I explained at the beginning. You can give us the paperwork, the power of attorney, your ID, form of identification, and we put it in your name. Um, I don't have like a copy, but if like you're interested, we can email you like how the contract is, the buyer's contract, purchasing information, stuff like that. Uh, there's typically a development budget that's for like one or two years. Uh, I think recently we experimented with putting a five-year budget onto like the purchase price. I'm not sure which property that was, but like, so usually it's like a two-year budget. So like you buy for $10,000 your private lot, and that includes like $1,000 into like the budget, basically. Like where you, um, it helps maintain the driveway, helps maintain the power line, helps maintain the water line. There's things that kind of go for the communal, community access or like benefit. Occasionally there's also like a community, um, plot of fruit in the community center, which we would also pay for maintenance of that. <coughs> um, taxes are really almost nothing there. Like, two years ago, they got rid of, like, a certain type of the rural tax, which was only, like, a hundred and, it was, like, maybe three hundred dollars for these, you know, three properties, 130 hectares. So it's, it's negligible, basically, the tax, um, the property tax. Um, and we almost have no building permits, unless we build, like, really close to the river or something. We don't need to 
submit any tournaments to the building stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff about the situation there. Uh, do you have any questions? I'm finally done. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Start again. I'm I lived in a commune in uh, New Zealand for a year. And we had 500 acres. And the biggest problem we had in our view was disagreements. Between, because it was started by women. And men were in prison. And they were Quakers. And the Second World War. And um, then the men, of course, joined the women. And it changed and changed and it developed. The people grew older. <coughs> and there was not enough money sometimes to help the elderly. And um, it, sometimes the meetings went on for hours. You know, you'd have like, 10 hours. And yeah, people okay, 10 would, hours later. You know, they'd be. <laughs> like three to six hours usually I'm meeting with those, so like, part topics. Conflict topic. resolution. I really love the idea of, you know, when you have conflict between people and their different personalities or their backgrounds that they're bringing in and their. Yeah, we, we haven't really gotten into, like, what's going to happen with people in their elderly age yet. Yeah. One of our, you know, hopes is that people would be kind of just, like, relatively healthy, not need too much help, besides, like, you know, just majority of things being done for them, probably, you know, or anyways, like, harvesting and, like, cleaning and, you know, so they're just, but then as long as they're able to walk around, I think we're in a pretty good situation. Uh, yeah. so, but there, there is more to that, I think, like, that we haven't covered, like, you know, happen in people's old age, like, you know, because, like, for example, if somebody's, like, 70 or 80, they just become the community volunteer for, like, one year, and then they're, like, incapable of something, and then, you know, I don't, anyways, I can see, I can theorize how that would go down, yes. and then, but then if somebody's, like, been there for 40 years, and gone, they're working, and then they get old, you know, there's different scopes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds great what you're doing, and you have a lovely sort of sense of humour because what I noticed often in people long term who've lived in communes they, the children sometimes really hated their parents choosing to go into a commune and there were fights between children and uh, the people who first chose to go there and that created a conflict because they didn't have good parent centered ideas like we were talking about today and it's, it's something that you say at the moment you don't have many children is that yeah, one of our big concerns is just like how to keep like future generations in the cycle of like, you know, cause, like I think most of us have experienced it, like, you know, you don't really value this alternative way of living until you've seen the bad side of modern society. Because like, you know, obviously most of those children would be like, oh, like, you know, music video, cars, like dancing, like sexy, drugs, whatever, it sounds fun, they'll do it, you know? Like, Yes. I can see how they like, get all that peel, so then it's like, okay, so then we have to think about all the education that kind of needs to be provided to these kids so that they understand the whole spectrum of the work. So, like, kind of, uh, you know, given all this, like, media. Oh, we give um, uh, member reviews, like, one, three, and six month reviews. <laughs> so like yeah, after one month we give a review like what we like, what we saw, you know, what we didn't like, and, and then at six months people from a volunteer.